A warm welcome to the 38th session in the first module of the course Signals and Systems. We have been looking at convolution in the last few sessions and we have been trying to understand how to carry out this basic operation between two signals that emanates from basic considerations in the context of signals and systems. In this session, we would like to embark on a study of two very important properties of this operation, convolution. And though I had hinted at those properties earlier, in fact, I have kind of used them, I would now present a formal proof of the two properties. And the two properties that I am going to discuss are as follows, two important properties commutativity and associativity of convolution. What we are going to do is we are going to prove these two properties formally and together for discrete and continuous convolution. I had given you an exercise, you will recall much earlier on in our discussions, I had given you an exercise to prove these properties, but now I will complete that task for you both in continuous and in discrete independent variables. So, let us take up the first somewhat simpler property first, namely commutativity. Essentially says that x1 convolved with x2 is the same as x2 convolved with x1. And this is true both in continuous and in discrete time, true in continuous independent variable and in discrete independent variable. We shall prove it for both. Let us prove it first for discrete, that is a little easier. Let y be equal to x1 convolved with x2. Of course, x1, x2, y are all sequences. So, y n is by definition x1 k x2 n minus k summed over all k running over all the integers. And now, we make a very simple transformation of variable. We put n minus k equal to L. Remember, this is true for each n. And for that n, we put n minus k equal to L, which implies n minus L equal to k. And when k goes from minus to plus infinity, then L also goes similarly. And therefore, we could replace in the summation, we could replace k by n minus l and we could replace n minus l minus n minus k by l. And there we are, it tells us that y of n is also summation l going from minus to plus infinity x2 l x1 n minus l, which is essentially x2 convolved with x1. For every such n. x2 convolved with x1 evaluated at n and of course, this is true for every such n. So, naturally, the convolution operation is commutative. So, we have proved. Now, let us take the continuous independent variable case. Here again, let us write y is x1 convolved with x2. The only thing is x1, x2 and y are all continuous variable signals, which then goes on to say that y of t is integral x1 lambda x2 t minus lambda d lambda running from minus to plus infinity. And we will take a q from the discrete case and we will make a similar transformation of variable. Put t minus lambda is equal to alpha, whereupon lambda is t minus alpha. And when lambda runs from minus infinity to plus infinity, alpha runs, now note, it runs from plus infinity to minus infinity for a fixed t and d lambda is minus d alpha. So, all in all, we must now make the replacement of variable as follows. Let us do it here. t minus alpha needs to be replaced by lambda, well, t minus alpha by lambda or t minus lambda by alpha, it is the same thing. And d lambda is minus d alpha and here this would go from plus infinity to minus infinity. So, what we see in red is the modified form of the integral. 
and now we need to put the integral back in the form which is familiar to us. So, let us write down the integral first y of t is plus infinity to minus infinity x 1 t minus alpha x 2 alpha minus t alpha, but then now you can take the minus sign and absorb with the reversal of integral, which makes it minus to plus infinity x 2 alpha x 1 t minus alpha d alpha and that is the same as x 2 convolved with x 1 evaluated at that specific t. This is true for every t. Hence, we have proved that y is in general the same as x 2 convolved with x 1. So, we have proved what we wanted to. So, we proved the commutativity of convolution both in discrete independent variable and in continuous independent variable. Now, we shall take up the question of associativity. We will first do it in the discrete independent variable case as before and then go to the continuous independent. So, let us take the meaning of associativity first. Associativity as the name suggests is a question of association between pairs. So, what you really want is to consider x 1 convolved with x 2 first and then with x 3 and to question whether y is also equal to x 1 convolved with the result of convolution of x 2 and x 3. So, if convolution is associative, yes, let us prove. Let us begin with the discrete case as we had promised. So, let x 1, x 2, x 3 and y all be sequences, the discrete case. Whereupon, we first consider x 1 convolved with x 2 evaluated at n and that is summation k going from minus to plus infinity x 1 k x 2 n minus. Now, x 1 convolved with x 2 and then convolved with x 3 all this evaluated at n is essentially summation l going from minus to plus infinity x 1 convolved with x 2 evaluated at l multiplied by x 3 evaluated n minus l and we can expand this. This is the expansion and now we need to make a change of variable, but to make that change of variable we must first see where we want to go. So, let us write down the result of the other side x 1 convolved with the result of convolution of x 2 and x 3. Let us write down the expression there. So, look at this expression here. Here we have essentially calculated x 1 first convolved with x 2 and then convolved with x 3. Now, what we shall calculate is x 1 convolved with the result of convolution of x 2 and x 3. Now, first let us convolve x 2 and x 3 and evaluate it at n. That is very simply summation k going from minus to plus infinity x 2 k x 3 n minus k. And of course, so as not to confuse it with the previous k that we had, let us call this variable k 1. Now, what we want to do is to calculate x 1 convolved with this result at the point n and that is going to be equal to summation l going from minus to plus infinity or if you like l 1 going from minus to plus infinity x 1 l 1 x 2 convolved with x 3 evaluated at n minus l 1 and we can expand this. This is what we have. Now, we need to make a correspondence of variables and then decide upon an appropriate transformation. So, let us go back to the previous expression that we had. Look at this expression here. You see what you had here was this expression finally and you need to bring a correspondence with this expression here. Now, what is the correspondence? It is very clear that 
x 1 has essentially the same kind of variable. So, there is a correspondence between l 1 and k. I will show you both of them again. So, you will see. There is a correspondence between l 1 and k. And we need to make a correspondence between l minus k and k 1. Look at it, l minus k here and k 1 there, k 1 here, l minus k there. So, let us make that correspondence. Now, essentially what we are going to do in proving associativity is to make this correspondence and for the discrete case there is no problem we will have no difficulty in making the correspondence and then transforming the double summation in such a way that we make the summation look the same. But in continuous variable, we will have to do a little work in the sense we will have to bring in the notion of a Jacobian and we shall do that in the next session both for the discrete case to complete the argument and for the continuous case to add those few little details which will make the proof complete. We will meet again in the next session and complete the discussion on associativity. Thank you.